We want to welcome the 215 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. We also want to thank the 4,826 locations who took the time to watch our last two celebration service. Let's give God praise and glory. Amen. You know, the last couple of weeks, um, I used to say 4,826 views, but the Lord told me, he said, Randy, there's more than one person in a lot of these locations. So he said 4,826 locations, because we need to be praying those are all future house churches. Those are places where people open up their homes and... Uh, start to minister to people right there. Um, if you're opening a house church or you already have opened a house church, make sure you put that heart emoji on our Facebook page. Remember, all you need is you and one other person. And I'm going to share with you some numbers here. Really, the goal is at least four people total. And one of those is you. And you might say, well, Randy, you said multiply at 15. Well, we're going to show you how quickly God can harvest this planet in 12 months with the Christians he already has and the house churches are already there. So I, I wrote down some numbers for you tonight. Uh, there's 2.6 billion Christians on earth right now. So 2.6 billion Christians. If every one of you, when one person in the next 12 months... That's 5.2 billion people saved. That's just the 2.6 winning one person in 12 months. That doubles the congregation in a 12 month period. Mm -hmm. Now, if those 2.6 billion people decide to just get radically crazy for Jesus and turn their TV off, put their popsicle down, Quit petting the stuff in the garage for a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still Randy here. <laughs> <laughs> so you get real radical and you say, you know what, I'm going to win two people for Jesus in 12 months. That's 7.8 billion people. The Christians, everybody saved. There's only 7.9 billion people on the planet. So within 12 months, the existing Christianity, Leonard, I'm not making this up, the existing Christianity, Mark, in 12 months can win the world for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now the biggest hang up for this, Pete, is the structure we have right now to disciple them won't work. That wineskin will shred within a matter of days. Mm -hmm. But I got good news. God's got a wineskin that can handle every single one of them four at a time. Mm -hmm. You and three other people. You cannot believe how this is going around the world. Yeah. You cannot believe the people contacting us and Patty going, I didn't realize discipleship was this simple. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize all I need to reach is the people I know. Mm -hmm. There's two billion plus homes on the planet. So we got two billion potential house churches. So you and three other people per house church. All Lauren and Jennifer need is two other people. Mm -hmm. And they're part of the two billion. <coughs> See, we can wrap our mind around a couple ministering to two people. We can wrap our mind around one person ministering to three. But you'll never have one minister to a hundred. You'll never have one minister to 3,000. Now that person can motivate from a pulpit, but they can't disciple. Mm -hmm. You can only handle five intimate relationships psychologically. Mm -hmm. That's your max. Well, Randy, I know I got 400 people in my phone. 
Five intimate relationships means that Lauren's children have access to him 24-7. I'm talking intimate relationships where if there's a tragedy, Lauren's in his car and he's heading a direction. You can only handle five of those max. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some of you, your families are bigger than that. But if five of those intimate relationships needed Mark at the same time, all five, it would pretty much max him out. Isn't it ironic that the Lord's saying four people, <coughs> one includes you. So four times two billion homes is eight billion people in church. I'm just an old farm boy, but that's pretty easy math, man. The buildings are there. The locations are there. Russell, they're sitting right in the middle of the harvest field. I don't care if you're in the Amazon, in the jungle. I don't care if it, it's a little hot. Richard, remember when we were talking about this, about missions and, and going into these remote areas and utilizing their homes. Mm -hmm. Why are people contacting us every day? This is not new. It's just we're going back to the book of Acts. Right. <laughs> so 8 billion people in church in 12 months. Now that's a building program. Yeah. That's a building program. I, I don't know if you realize the gospel is going to be preached to the whole earth in the next 10 and a half years if the Lord tarries. Somebody asked me an awesome question the other day. Well, Randy, what happens if the rapture happens? I'm going to show you that in a second in the word. What God has in mind. The only location that can disciple 8 billion people is your home. Mm -hmm. Amen. Russell and three other people can disciple 8 <clears throat> billion people. Richard, three other people can disciple 8 billion people. Pete, the Christians we have right now can win the world in 12 months and disciple them three at a time. I'm going to let that marinate. See, God's getting ready. He's been doing it for 2,000 years. Equip the saints to do the work of the ministry but Jennifer we got to hand them something that's practical or they'll say I don't want to be a pastor I'm not called to be a leader but I guarantee you you can invest in three people I'm just taking my time milking this cow <laughs> taking my time Taking my time. I got a good grip. <laughs> the only location that can disciple 8 billion people is your home. And three other people, one hour a week. Can you give God? Yes, Lord, we can. <laughs> that train's awesome. Lord, we just pray radical salvation over this engineer. He just got clad wrapped. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He goes, I was driving through Chiloquin and I started bawling like a baby. <laughs> Salvation is free. Discipleship will cost you your lifetime. Can you give your home and yourself to God for four hours a month? Four hours a month to start. How many hours, Randy, are there in a month? I'm glad you asked. 730 hours, Lauren, in a month. All Randy just asked for 
is four out of 730 hours in a month. So I did some calculation, or Google did it for me. I did have to ask the question. I said, what's the percentage of four hours to 730 hours, Melody? Melody's a math person. <laughs> Learning? Oh, What's the percentage? 29%? Oh, I thought 17. Say that again. So you got four hours out of 730. What do you think the percentage is of how much time you need to give God? I got the answer. So don't fake it till you make it. It's about one two hundredth of it, so. 0.02%. That's why I hang out with Bernie. <laughs> he's, he's close. So if you decide to grace God with your angelic presence for four hours out of 730, you will give God half of 1%. So four hours is half of 1%. You get the other 99.5%. Whenever Randy's voice gets loud. <laughs> See, Mark, he, got, he knows what's going on now. See, I'm just saying, a starting point is four hours a month, you're giving God a half of 1%. He's giving you 99.5% of the time. Be careful when you say, I don't have time to evangelize. I don't have time to win two souls in a 12-month period. I don't have time to make disciples. I don't have time. See, this is the appetizer message. It's just, just getting you a little hungry. So let's put some scripture in here. Let's go to Mark 8, 34 through 38. See, you're going to have to give an account of your lifetime. You're going to have to give an accounting of your time. The currency of heaven is time. The streets are paved with gold. Gold is asphalt in heaven. The currency of heaven is time. The most valuable thing you have is your life time. And the enemy wants you to not even give God a half of one percent tile in a 30-day period. You know, in that 30 days, the average person sleeps a third of it. So what's that, 33%? So you give 33% to sleep, but you can't give a half of 1% to minister. You didn't hire me can't fire me. God brought me into your wonderful life. Yes. Amen. And we're not talking about the movie Wonderful Life. That's a fairy tale. I'm not a fairy tale. And neither are you. Mark 8, the Gospel of Mark, verse 8, appetizer message, 34 through 38. Then he called to the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Verse 35. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. Verse 36. What good it is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul. Remember that word forfeit. 
You know how I like definitions. Verse 37. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful... You think this is an adulterous, sinful generation? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes into his Father's glory with his holy angels. <clears throat> Remember, we're still on appetizer. Randy... What is my soul? You guys have such good questions. <laughs> Randy, what is my soul? So we're going to break it down farm boy style to help you understand that if you wind up in a place of complete darkness for eternity with all your memories. See, hell isn't going to be about fire. Hell is the absence of light mark with your soulish realm intact. Randy, what is the definition of soul? Mind, will, and emotions. So Richard, when people go to hell, the absence of light, Jennifer, and you have your mind, your will, and emotion. I want you to this week take three hours, put on something that you can't see light, and sit there. <laughs> with all of your mind, will, and emotions, and you'll get a little taste of what it's going to be like to be with you all by yourself for eternity. Can you imagine being with you all by yourself with you in the dark? You're already going. That's hell. Put somebody in a cell for 30 days. And when they really wanted to torment them in the old prisons, they turned the light off. And they never made it 30 days. If they left the light on, they could make it. But once they removed Jennifer the light, they went insane. Now I grew up around here and every once in a while when we were young in those lava bed caves, yeah. The light went off. You ever been in the lava bed caves and the light goes off? You got your hand right here. You can't see it. I am not talking about hell to scare you. I'm talking to you about your mind, will, and emotions. Paul said, I preach to others, then myself be disqualified. So Paul's talking about there's got to be some discipline or you won't even give God a half a percent of 730 hours. And Paul said, you know what? If I don't discipline myself, I'll preach to others and I'll actually be disqualified. And you might say, well, Randy, what's disqualified means? It means made unfit. All Satan has to do is divide your mind, your will, and your emotions. He doesn't have to kill you. He doesn't even have to make you unhappy. He buys most people by making them happy. By the time they get unhappy, Russell, then they come begging Jesus. Well, I tried everything else. Might give the bearded wonder a try. Am I serious? Yeah. I tell people all the time, the more blessed you are, you better walk the chalk, baby. You better be slapping yourself around because Satan knows all he has to do is make you unfit. Yeah. You're not a disciplined person. Randy, I used to like you. <laughs> You lie. You've never liked me. <laughs> you like me, just not my messages. Disqualified. Make unfit. All Satan has to do is divide your mind, will, and emotions, and you will not even give God a half of 1% constantly. Now look at the Western church right now. 74% of Christians attend church once a month. 
74% of Christians. Ooh. Now we need 2.6 billion when in two and three quarters. You know, I wonder how long I would have had a job for the last year, 12 years training people. A uh, Bernie, you know, I just might not make it three out of four times. Right. You know, Richard, I, you know, I just don't feel like going to work today. And I tell my self-employed business, Leonard, I, I'm, you know, three out of four times, I'm not going to be there. So don't count on me because I'm unfit. Mm -hmm. And Paul just said this causes a disqualification. Mm -hmm. And then the 74% are always preaching at us, but we never see them. Appetizer. Wontons, <laughs> barbecue beef. <laughs> you would be pretty thin if you eat one meal a month. Mm -hmm. You'd be pretty thin if you eat one meal a month. I guess food is pretty important to you in the natural or the physical realm, but spiritual food's not important to you. Isn't it amazing how we'll, we'll feed this whenever it whines and moans? But we can't give God a half of 1% of our time. But boy, Jack in the Box is open. Boy, when women are pregnant, they'll drive three hours to get a pickle and ice cream. Oh, sorry, you went and drove and got it for them. <laughs> but ask to give the Lord an hour in your home. <gasps> oh, sorry. A little sick, a little tired. Just not into it today. But boy, you probably ate today. <laughs> See, these kind of messages don't put butts in the seats. You'd be pretty thin if you ate only one meal a month. I guess food's pretty important to you in the natural or the physical realm, but spiritually not important. So here's that word forfeit. When you forfeit your soul, you lose it. And the other definition of forfeit is the penalty of wrongdoing. The penalty of wrongdoing with your time. I care about where you're going to spend eternity, so I warn you tonight as a watchman. It, it's, it's nothing about challenging or punishing. It's about valuing. People are watching your life. Those three people that are supposed to be sitting in your house or you start with one has to see consistency. I train people for a living. I've been doing that professionally for 12 years. See how long Randy's business lasts when he doesn't show up three quarters of the time. Boy, when you guys were in the world working a secular job. Mm -hmm. But boy, when it comes to Jesus. Much greater price. Mm -hmm. Please excuse me, Lord. All right, main course. <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians. Now, don't let this get heavy on you. Oh, Randy's talking to me. You know, he's where I'm here. He's talking to me. There's going to be several thousand people. Watch this message. So, so don't get crazy. But if the shoe fits, let it kick you in the butt. That's right. Is that what that means? <laughs> Ephesians 6.18. So we've spent months in these verses. And we're just going to scratch the surface tonight of verse 18. 
we might spend a month in 18, 19, and 20. I, we probably will spend a month in these three verses. So my title of my message tonight is All. A-L-L, -L, All. Ephesians 6.18 And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. There, there's a month right there. Just and we're gonna we're not gonna get in a hurry, so we're just gonna we're just gonna take the lid off the peanut butter jar and just take a scoop with a little chocolate kiss on it. <laughs> well, make you your own Reese's tonight. Because you look like you need to be sweetened up a little. <laughs> so the definition of all is total without exceptions. You cannot give God excuses. If you're all in, there's no exceptions. You're either all in or you're not. And, and not school. But don't go gray, man. Don't, don't ride that fence because you'll be lying to yourself. You, you'll think you're okay, but you deep down inside know you're not all in. You know it. So be honest with yourself. I'm going all in or I'm not doing it at all. Mm -hmm. I want you all in. But at the end of the day, you're going to stand before a Lord that's all in. That's right. Without exceptions, total. So it said here on all occasions. Occasion is a particular time. And God just told us all occasions. There is no particular time. I own you 24-7. The Lord. I'm the Lord's servant. Sam, when he calls, Randy goes. When he says lay down, Randy lays down. The Lord says get up. You got to be at work. Six. To train somebody. You're up an hour early. Don't be flying around by the seat of your pants. Whenever my clients show up late. Oh, Randy, I am so sorry. I'm like, I said, I'm the employee, man. You're the employer. Now, if Randy's not on time, right, Bernie? There's a problem, and Randy's going to deal with Randy. But you're late. The clock started ticking before you got here. I'm being paid. <laughs> Randy's getting paid. And what's nice about all my clients? They pay me a month in advance. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who in the spirit realm is praying for you? Now this, we're going to lay some serious foundation for the next few weeks. Who in the spirit realm is praying for you 24-7? He was the same in your past. Jesus knows you from before you were born. Yep. Right. I want you to know about somebody that's praying for you right now. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Might be a good person to be talking to daily. So he knew you in your past. He knows you today. That's who's praying for Pete while he's sleeping, whatever he's doing, 24-7, Pete is on the Lord's mind. It's going to change your life tonight. It will absolutely change your life, but you got to say, am I all in or I'm not going to do it at all? Because that's the time we live in now. Mm -hmm. And the most important, 
He is standing at the end of Pete's life. Jesus is standing at the end of Pete's life, watching him breathe his last breath. That's the guy that was praying for Mark today and Deb and Jackie. That's the guy that didn't sleep, didn't eat, doesn't need to, praying for Carol today and Nick Amen. and Melody. Amen. It's getting in, isn't it? Yeah. See, some denomination, oh, pray in the spirit, Shondai Rondai, who stole Mahandai. Right. <laughs> no. You, you missed it. Nothing wrong with that gift. I got it. Nothing wrong. But Jesus is in the spirit realm. Yes. But saying pray in the spirit, you've got to start communicating in the spirit realm so you're effective in the physical realm. We do all this armor and all the way. By the way, pray and be alert. Dude, I'm the baddest thing on the planet. Then why did he just tell you to pray and be alert even though you got your armor on? Because you're going to be tested to see how consistent you are with that armor. Yeah. Not by God, by the enemy. Right. That's why it says take up, Pete, and put on. Mm -hmm. That tells me you can take it off. <laughs> I love church. <laughs> it just don't like me. No, it does. We like you. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you know, I've been here for two and a half years. I know. I guess we're doing okay. That's right. You betcha. The same today, but the most important, he is standing at the end of your lifetime. His name is Jesus. You need to start being Holy Spirit led in your lifetime or you will handcuff Jesus prayers for you 24 seven. Your free will will put Jesus's hands behind his back and stick him in the cop car. Mm -hmm. You'll just say, you know what, Lord, you're not that important to me. You're not worth four hours a month. I'm a busy person. But I'll sleep 33% of that time away. I'll make sure I eat once or twice or three times a day. But I won't give you an hour a week. See, when we're talking about harvesting the earth, and we're talking about discipling the whole earth personally, Pete, we have to be involved daily, weekly. That's why it's important that we know the Lord is making intercession for us every moment. If you get this tonight and you realize that intercession is every moment you'll give him an hour, no problem, a week. You might even put a little chalkboard in your bathroom. I'm going to give Jesus one hour a week. Or a sticky note on your mirror. Whatever you got to do. It's your choice. You have a free will. It's your choice. So let's go to Romans. Romans 8.34. See, I really got to sober up. You know, I've been preaching for 33 years every weekend. <coughs> Unless I was gone, and usually if I was gone, I was preaching somewhere else. See, when I got saved, it was like, I'm going all in. I'm going to be available. Romans 8.34 Romans 8, 34. And, and this is going to help you so much. Online, around the world, I don't care how seasoned of a Christian you are, it's going to jog your memory of when you first got saved. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 34. 
Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Romans 8, 34. You feel how heavy that is? I'm not meaning heavy like the 60s heavy. <laughs> that verse has some weight to it. I love the old hymn, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. <laughs> love it. Love it. Yes, he knew me. Yes, he loved me. When he was on the cross, Robert was on his mind. Sam was on his mind. Randy, I just can't stay consistent. You're right. That's why Jesus prays for you. He prays for you that you are consistent. Mm -hmm. The greatest quality you can have as a Christian is being faithful, mm -hmm. being consistent. Because the enemy knows all he needs to do to disqualify you is attack your mind, your will, and your emotions, get into your soulish realm. You know, the children of Israel, Jennifer, 11 days to make it to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Why 40 years, Randy? Mm -hmm. The Lord could not get Egypt out of them. Mm -hmm. See, the reason you won't be consistent and make it from point A to point B in 11 days is the Lord cannot get the Egypt out of you. And every year we'll see you doing a lap. What does it profit a man yeah. if he gains the whole world but forfeits his soul? Mm -hmm. Satan doesn't have to kill you. He doesn't even have to make you unhappy. He can put stuff around you, Mark, the, all the toys, all the stuff that makes you happy, and then you'll tell the Lord, please excuse me, I just bought some property. Please excuse me, I just bought four quads. And John, all he's asking for is a half of 1%. And we tell him, when you were on the cross, Jesus, you are not on my mind. And you're not on my mind now. Hmm. The hour is late yeah. for the planet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The master is preparing the banquet. And he's going to all the people he knows and he's saying, can you give me your life, time, and finish well. Right. Amen. So look who is right beside Jesus, the Father, and who is in you, the Holy Spirit. 24-7, they are focused on your success. You got three spiritual beings that want to make you one of the most successful people on this planet and you don't have time. But you must be available on all occasions. You do not want to be one of those who are saying, 
Please excuse me, I am unfit. I'm unfit, Lord. Just don't feel like it today. I don't want to do it. I don't want to be consistent. I'm just unfit. Your lifetime is a vapor. The Bible says your lifetime is a mist. And the Bible says your lifetime is a moment. Three different interpretations. Vapor, mist, moment. I pray along with Jesus, you take advantage of your moment. Make it count for eternity. This world will pass away. Only what's done for Christ Jesus will last. It's your choice. Are you all in? And I wrote here and underlined it. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Th this is not a message to condemn people. I make a living pushing people physically to their limits. Five days a week. But what I've learned over 12 years of coaching people physically, the mental part is more important. Even when I'm training somebody, I know what I'm doing can break them mentally. So I never take them that far. I'll always say, leave one rep in the tank. Finish strong. But I'll watch other trainers destroy people. And they're a trainer for about six months, a year. I'm not trying to destroy you tonight. I'm not trying to push you over the edge. But I am going to push you to your potential. That's what the Word of God does. It's constantly requiring of you your lifetime. This Word is a mirror, and that's why people don't read it. That's why people don't look at it because when all of a sudden they look at it and go, ooh, yeah, let's go to church next month one more time. <laughs> that Randy one time is one time too much. <laughs> you know, there's 165 signatures in that book. We're still here. House churches all over the basin. You grow it on me. Yeah. And we're growing on Mark. I think I can retire now. But what I'm saying is all of them, same opportunity. Same opportunity. What does it profit a person? Mind, will, and emotion, soul. Hell, for people that don't go to heaven, is no light ever again in all their memories of how many times they couldn't give God an hour a week. How many times a half of 1% over a 30-day period, I was too busy, and that will torture you for eternity. And you'll see my face. <laughs> it's always about you, Rick. You got your own house, church. They'll see your face then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? All right. Good time for an altar call. All right. So Romans 10, 9 says, Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. The time we're living in, Peter quoted out of the book of Joel in Acts chapter 2, all of a sudden, everybody's going to be speaking prophesying, speaking the word. Old, young, 
middle age, because God's pouring out His Spirit. He said, all they'll have to do is call on the name of Jesus. Well, I don't like that, Rand. I've been the negative person in church for 40 years, and I'm saved. And they're going to get saved. Well, let me give you an illustration. A landowner hired some guys in the morning. And about midday, some more guys came. About three quarters of the day, some more guys came. And one hour left in the 12 hour day, some more gentlemen came. Said, can we work? The master, the owner of the field said, absolutely. So when the day was over, he started paying the 12 hour guys their wage. So they kind of hung around for some reason. And all of a sudden, the one-hour guy got paid the same wage. Mm -hmm. And the 12-hour people got angry at the one-hour people. Mm -hmm. Don't get angry when you see some of the people get saved in the next few weeks and months. Mm -hmm. And they leave you in the dust. Mm -hmm in the dust. Be running with them. Amen. Be helping them. We're going to see this great harvest. And I forgot to tell you something in the middle of this altar call. I think it's Revelation. 11. You know, the Holy Spirit will just slap the snot right out of you when you forget something. Now I got to remember where that verse is I looked up. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I completely did not know that verse, and the mind of Christ just told me what it was. I'm dead serious. Revelation 14:6. So remember, gospel be preached to the whole world as a testimony and will come. We're going to do that ourselves in the next 10 and a half years. Done deal. They've already got all the countries. They've got the people. That's happening today. Yeah. So a person walked up to me and said, but Randy, what if the rapture happens and the gospel has not been preached in the whole world as a testimony? Great question. I don't know why I didn't write that in my notes. I talked about it, but I forgot about it. Now I remember. <laughs> yes, I am crazy. <laughs> Revelation 14, 6. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. There it is. Yep. So Judy, we're running hard for the next three and a half years. We bump up to that seven years before 2033 and everybody's going, well, it ain't going to happen. God's a liar. Nope, right here. Yeah. He's going to dispatch an angel. I guarantee you get some big angel circle on this planet talking to you in your language saying, repent. That You, you got to make a decision. Are you all in? So just know in the next 10 and a half years, whether the rapture happens or it doesn't, this gospel, Matthew 24, 14, will be preached to the whole earth as a testimony, then the end will come. We're in a 10 and a half year window. Oh, you're wanting to get saved. I'm glad you stayed with me. <laughs> Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Yes, this mind does move laterally. <laughs> confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. Book of Acts, which I was talking about three minutes and 30 seconds ago, and then I went on a rabbit trail. I'm back. <laughs> Born out of spirit, just call on the name of Jesus, you'll be saved. So we're going to pray a simple prayer with you, a confession of Christ. And uh, we're going to believe you're going to get saved. The Holy Spirit's going to come inside of you. And you're going to start winning people for Jesus with your testimony. Amen. So 
Just pray this prayer with us tonight. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I believe that you hung on a cross and that you died and paid for my sins. Jesus, I believe that you rose again on the third day. Jesus, I ask you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 So if you're opening a house church or you already have, put the heart emoji on the Facebook page so we can be praying for you. Randy, how do I start? Use the video and the altar call. Have a discussion. You just got saved from this service. So by Sunday night, it'll be on YouTube and you can go get your house full of people and say, hey, this is where I got saved. You want to watch this message? And guess what? Probably two or three people are going to go, well, you got pizza? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say at Dan's house church, there's donuts. <laughs> That's an American Chilliquin donuts and coffee. So, I don't know where you're at in the world, but it works for Dan's house church. <laughs> they actually told him if he stops having them, he's going to be fired. <laughs> so, be careful about the donut stuff. No, we're just having fun. That's why a few thousand people are going to watch this message next couple of weeks. So, the Bible says they broke bread daily, house to house. And the book of Acts said they started getting saved in the houses weekly. And Acts 8-2 said, Saul began persecuting the church house to house, dragging the men and women out of the houses, taking them to prison. The houses were dangerous because they couldn't be micromanaged. Love you guys. Heart emoji, house church. We'll be praying for you. See you next week.